the dawn of civilization. Primitive, dangerous, exciting. The handwriting is on the wall. If the human race is ever going to amount to anything, it needs the most civilized caveman I have ever seen. Ah, oh, look who's come out of his cave. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is James from Cave Dweller Music. I'm here with my co-host Brendan. And today we have uh, Cody from Vermilion Dawn joining us. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. Of course. Um, so for anyone who isn't familiar with you or the project, uh, do you want to just maybe tell people a little bit about what you do and what the music is? Yeah, so um, I have started doing like music when I was younger. I had been in like a, you know, like a smaller band, stuff like that. Um, and as I matured and grew like a little older, I kind of wanted to do my own music that my other bandmates couldn't play. So I ended up branching off into my own um, kind of solo music stuff. I started off just recording myself with like the basic, you know, audacity recording program, you know, like a little audio interface. And I taught myself kind of how to play guitar. I think I've only had like maybe two professional lessons in my life. The rest of it's kind of just, you know, thinking around with the guitar myself. And from there, you know, I would sit and write music, um, release stuff on YouTube here and there didn't you know get much attention or anything and then lately i started this recent project um you know vermilion dawn and over all my experience i've had um you know doing music trying to be online um making you know doing like artwork logos stuff like that um i kind of used all of that experience to to launch like a you know a, a good attempt at um an actual like album and this is kind of what i came up with so i mean it was all done by me I, I did all the music for it all the writing and the lyrics i had two guest appearances on it um i contracted the artwork and that that's where i am today right now um just kind of a self-taught musician mix my own stuff so i'm just trying to it's a big learning process and um it's just it's continuously learning and that's where kind of where i'm at right now that's awesome, awesome. well it's uh the practice and uh, all of that that development really shows in your music because uh, I was just saying to Brendan, um, I had no idea that it was a one man project. When I found that out, it kind of blew my mind. It has such a full sound, uh, and all the instruments are so well performed. The vocals are excellent. So, yeah, I would never have guessed that it was just you behind all of that. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, that's that was kind of um, kind of like one of the goals I had writing the music and during the writing process. I kind of want to write it as though. You know, I'm a guitarist mainly, and, you know, when I'd write other parts like a bass or a drum part, I try to have like a an individual aspect to that part. So it's not like I'm playing bass. It's like, what would my my bass player play if I had a bass player? Mm -hmm. And I yeah. kind of just, I imagine like I have a full band, um, but, it, you know, it's just me. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think that's a, you... a good way to frame it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you um, like ever like kind of contracted people to like play live shows at all or anything like that or just studio? Right now, I, it is just studio. Um, if I did play live, I think my biggest hurdle would probably be finding a bassist and a drummer. Um, I, you know, I used to have a drummer in my old band, but we play like prog uh, metal and stuff like that, and nothing like all this blast beats, double bass, more deathcore oriented type of writing. And if finding somebody like around the area that could learn, you know, that is able to play that kind of music and that writing style um, would just be really difficult. Same with like a bass player. Um, my cousin, who is actually in my other band, you know, is able to learn a lot of my music and he knows like a lot of my chord structures and he would probably be able to do be like another guitarist if I ever needed one. And I know he'd do it. And then James Federhoff, who I just brought onto the, the project um, as like a secondary additional vocalist, uh, would probably be doing like the live vocals and I would probably play guitar is probably what I would do if that scenario ever came up. Yeah. So is guitar your favorite instrument then? Yes, that was, you know, I played like in band as a kid and I played like clarinet mainly. I played like some bassoon. I was in a jazz band. I played the bass guitar and jazz band. And, you know, I had guitar that I would play at home and guitar was just always, ever since I got my hands on electric guitar, um, 
it's just always been my favorite instrument that I feel like I connect to the most. Yeah. So, and that's, that's always just been like my number one instrument. Like if I describe, you know, you do play any instruments, that's always the first one I name off. That's the one I'm most comfortable on. So definitely guitars would be my, my main role. Well, I have to say the guitar work on the Vermilion Dawn album was my favorite element. Um, absolutely killed. There was some riffs on there that were stuck in my head literally mm. for, for days after listening oh, to it for thank the first you. time. Thank you. That, that's really nice to hear. No, no worries. <laughs> Happy to say it. Yeah. Um, like a lot of the the guitar work, uh, like for this album is, you know, it's me, like I said before, it's like a learning process. And um, like I can't sweet pick or anything like that because I just never was taught that like like lessons or anything. So a lot of this stuff is, you know, I'm given like a certain ability cap that I'm able to play at um, like a certain skill level. And a lot of this album is, okay, well, how do I make this sound, you know, emotional, you know, I can, I, I'm able to play like a couple little like fast riffs and stuff, but that's where you get like a lot of those dissonant sounding guitars and like the soaring high leads and stuff. It's like, okay, well, I have to really make this sound, you know, as passionate as I can with, you know, one or two notes, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so that's where you get a lot of that stuff coming through is I, I just can't play super fast technical stuff, but from what I hear a lot of people like that aspect that it's not super technical over the top ridiculous riffs and stuff all over the yeah. place yep just that for was the sake of it definitely nine riffs um, in like a 47 second span yeah yeah no that, it, that yeah that was actually one of the things i wanted to talk to you about while you were on the show today was like uh i guess modern trends in technical death metal and deathcore um and the, i guess two of those trends that personally i'm not a big fan of um is one overproduction which I'm really glad you didn't do. Um, it wasn't completely clean and sterile, so it had some grit to it and a bite. Uh, and the other is, I'm going to call it technical wankery, um, yeah. which is literally just, you're not making music for the fans, you're making it to show off how much how good you are at guitar, really. Um, and that, that's the other thing for me that I really like tech death. I, you know, the old school tech death is awesome because it wasn't all about that, but a lot of the modern stuff, the trend is just to show off, basically, so yeah how do you how do you feel about those those more modern trends in the genre yeah so i i get bored listening to that some of you know some of that kind of music um mm -hmm. you know and I'll, I'll name a band here for just as an example i mean i love them but take for example like in fury you know yep. i'd say that's technical debt you know technical death metal whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. um love the band phenomenal musicians they have a lot of songs i like but i just get bored listening to some of this stuff because it just feels like it's you know a lot of that really super fast riffs it's like wow you know that's amazing but after listening to it so many times mm. it really it really takes a long time or takes something different in their music to get me to say wow you know that's interesting um yeah i think when i like the, the recent album i forget what it was called vile genesis like yeah, i listened I to the whole the whole album, I liked it. And the one song I think that really connected with me was the slower one towards the end. Um, that's not like fast blast beats or anything. Um, and it just had a little bit more, I guess your ears could relax a little bit more in it. Um, even though it was, you know, full bore the whole band playing, you know? Right. It's like a, but you, need a, you need a palate cleanser at some point. Yeah. 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 They're yeah. Um, playing, I think, in November around me. i try and check it out. It's an ec excellent show. They're phenomenal live. Um, really good. But yeah, that's the only thing that bugs me is just, it's just too much. Um, and like you said, technical wankery, it's like, you know, not saying in fury does that or anything, but in general with the genre, I feel like, you know, it's just a technical showcase. Like, look at me, you know, mm -hmm. I can play these ridiculous riffs and a lot of my friends, you know, we talk about music and stuff and it's like, you know, nowadays, if you want to be tr like truly be something unique, like, you know, you want to be the next Fallujah Dreamless album or anything like that, you really have to set the bar high and do something yep. insane, you know, um, that just people haven't heard of. And that's hard to do now, especially with how oversaturated the market is. Right. Because there's a lot of us being done. I mean, I think that some of those bands would stand out more if they actually took a step back and said, look, we're going to do the technical stuff, but we're going to bring in more proggy influences, more atmosphere, more feeling. Because I think that's what's lost with a lot of that stuff is the feeling. 
it's uh it's, right. it's become it becomes sterile and like manufactured and overproduced and mm-hmm. it's it's a shame because those guys are insanely talented like that's that's right. not the problem that they're like they're great musicians but i think it's, it's the songwriting where they start to really fall apart yeah. They should save all like the the fuckery for um, live shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? So like when oh. you're like, holy cow! Like they just like, you know, like you listen to their uh, studio album, and then you're expecting, you know, you know the song, but then like they can just like take it away in certain spots without like it being a totally different song, you know, and just like improv, and, yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I, I mean, there's, there's other musicians outside of the genre that do that too. Because, like, I guess the best example would be Yowie Melmstein. Uh, dude is like yes. a legendary guitarist, <laughs> absolutely fantastic musician. But I, I can't, I can't listen to an album. I, I can't do it. I get so yeah. bored. Yeah, it it gets old and like kind of like you know Dragon Force. I used to like Dragon mm-hmm. Force a lot, but I did too. You just listen to them, and you just, I, I don't. I don't get that same feeling, you know, as when I'm listening to like through the, you know, like Inhuman Rampage album or anything. Yes, that album is great. Through the Fire yeah. and Flames is a classic. Yeah, through that Fire and Flames, all the other songs on it too. But mm-hmm. now, like their later stuff, it's like I've already heard this, guys. You know. Yeah. Um, and you know what you were saying about like the, um, I want to come back to the uh, overproduction side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree 100. percent you know, it's nice to hear what a band would sound like, you know, with really clean production, crisp production. Um, but I think that it just, like you said, sounds, you know, over manu- like manufactured and you lose right. that soul in it. For me, the reason my album sounds the way it does is because I it's, it's on a budget. Like I spent money on the master. So I didn't spend money on mixing. It was on mastering mm-hmm. artwork. And like releasing it on Slam Worldwide and now getting physical CDs ordered. Um, so for me, like I learned all this mixing stuff and the guy I worked with, um, Nick Wires, he's actually a guitarist for the band Erroneous, who is on the same label as In Fury, mm-hmm. um, the Artisan Era. He did the mastering for it and he had like a lot of patience, kind of like said, hey, you know, what are you doing with all your compression stuff? And kind of like taught me a little bit about the basics of mixing and kind of guided me through it. But a lot of it's done myself. Um, And that's kind of the way it sounds. And I don't want it to sound super overproduced. Like I like having um, my guitars sound like they were recorded in my room. You know, it it just sounds better to me. Mm -hmm. No, I, I love it. I, I I hope that you don't change that as you get a higher budget. <laughs> no, I, I the way I see it now is I'm not expecting a higher budget. You know, if okay. I sell some stuff, <laughs> I want <laughs> that money to go back into like CDs. You know, if I want shirts someday, get shirts for people that want shirts. Um, as far as like my music process right now, I have all the equipment I need. Um, it's just a matter of me going and recording it, um, you know, and writing it. So I don't plan on changing it anytime soon. The only thing that might be you know, better is maybe the guitars may come in a little bit more clear, a better tone or something that bites a little bit more. Uh-huh. But as far as like all the atmospheric stuff and how the drums kind of sound right now, I'm, I kind of like to keep it like that organic sounding. Mm. Good. Nice. Um, yeah. So you mentioned actually does, that's a perfect segue because you mentioned slam worldwide. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about like uh, working with those guys? Uh, absolutely phenomenal. I'm not sure if it's, one person that runs it or multiple, but the person that I have a messaging that, you know, runs the, I believe he runs the page. Um, excellent to work with. Uh, it's a page that they have, you know, it's called slam worldwide, but they have multiple different genres kind of within the metal spectrum that kind of around there. They still have like death core slam grind core, maybe here and there, but they also have stuff like me with like progressive death metal or, you know, progressive death core. And they have a wide variety of bands. You know, you could easily release like something like the Zenith passage or something on there. And people would say, yeah, this is awesome. Mm-hmm. But basically, you know, you, you message them and say, Hey, you know, I'd like to release something on your, your page or your YouTube channel. And they'll set a date up with you that he has available and kind of book you on a schedule. And you pay a flat rate per upload. Um, And that's, you know, it could be my whole album was the same price to upload as my single that I released uh, like two weeks prior, which was 
incredible because it's like, you know, I didn't have to spend hundreds of dollars to release you know, my, my, my music. That's a big, the, one of the biggest barriers for people is mm-hmm. releasing their music and having a platform to put it on where you're actually getting value for your money. And every time I've released it in that particular channel, I've had people that will view it. I, you know, I get, uh, you know, around 4,000 views or something, which is awesome for a first release. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually have people that are leaving comments, you know, liking it, people that will transfer over from there to my band camp. Um, and a lot yeah. of people saying that this is not what I expected on this channel, but it's good. Um, just a lot of positivity. You know, some people will voice like, ah, I didn't care for like the sense or something, or this isn't slam. But, you know, those are like the hard, hardcore crowd right there. Yeah. But otherwise... <laughs> phenomenal source for like any like starting up band to use them um slam worldwide's great it's a great place to release your music i had nothing but good experiences so far with them awesome and if anyone is listening who hasn't checked it out as i'm, I'm as a listener of slam worldwide check it out it is awesome uh i am slightly biased because i'm a massive slam fan uh mm-hmm. which some of my friends make fun of but uh i find the genre <laughs> to be a, a lot of a lot of yeah you make fun of me for it <laughs> so does Matt. But, uh, uh, you, you know, know what? I, I really I love, <laughs> love like the music from Slam, but like it's the vocals that do it for me in most of the Slam. Like, I get it. I, I get just it. can't. I, 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 I just, just love how stu- I like how stupid it is. That's what I love about Slam. Like, and I, and I get I, and that for <laughs> I, I I definitely appreciate it as like um as like I don't know, man. It's like definitely comedic. It's definitely like, you know, over the top for sure, you know. Um, but for some reason, when every time I, I hear it and like like a song could be so fucking awesome and then all of a sudden they're just like re, 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 and I'm like, No, why? <laughs> <laughs> for me it's just like here's here's like the band just goes, here's twenty minutes of breakdowns of the song that's about sharks destroying humanity and like this is sweet. So Right. <laughs> And like that stuff, like is is awesome and a hundred percent appreciate. But some of it, like I'm just like, bro, you guys, like you had it going, and then you just. Oh, so that's sh- that's sharks against humanity thing is not a random example because there literally was a band I found on Slam Worldwide on Saturday called Eaten by Sharks that has a concept album about sharks destroying humanity. So I've actually I've actually heard of them. So that, that's true. <laughs> it's fun. It's a good time. Um, oh. and then uh, Cody, uh, outside of this, you mentioned that you had a, a prog uh, project that you work with. What was? Uh, do I tell us a little bit about that as well? Yeah, sure. Um, that was my original band that I formed with. Actually, my like my best friends from high school um, had two of my best friends, and then my cousin um, that actually played guitar with me as well in it. Uh, the band is called Conundrum. A couple years ago, we released a full length album. Um, called perihelion movement one and it was just you know it was like a concept album was supposed to have a movement too um and we released it and people liked it you know we play shows uh but lately we went back and retracted the vocals initially when we had tracked the vocals on that album we did it on our own like our own ours on ourselves the rest of the music was handled by the mixing and the master was handled by um, an actual like a home studio guy that does it on you know professionally and we didn't have the money to do the vocals so one of our band members took it to his um, college of music and recorded it at like the college studio and it just didn't fit in the mix um, just didn't sound that great uh, you know but that, that was just you know we didn't have experience back then and we said sure slap it on so the music sounded good the vocals didn't so we recently re-recorded that stuff, had it remixed back into the songs, and we're going to be releasing it here, I believe, September 10th. And that's going to be just released on the like the Facebook page, um, Bandcamp, stuff like that. You know, Spotify, it'll be up on Spotify, all the typical stuff that um, I used for my last album. But that's, yeah, it's just a prog, like prog metal. Yeah. Awesome. Definitely, yeah. I che- actually checked the album out uh, leading up to the interview because I saw that you were in that band as well. Um, very technical, uh, super proggy, a lot of fun. Yeah, that all that music was actually, aside from the drums, was actually written by me as well. So all the oh, guitar really? work, yeah, all the guitar work is actually stuff I recorded. 
um when i was learning how to record music and stuff i like recorded it with like audacity you know it's just that like that uh, digital workstation that you can use for music mm-hmm. um recorded it on that and all yeah all the music is me all the instruments we didn't have like any guest appearances um and then my vocalist was on there as well and we had the live drums and everything recorded too um but otherwise the, all the guitar work is all me that's awesome um so i guess between these two bands this raises a question for me that i want to ask you is who are you influenced by so uh like with your music what bands kind of inspired you to start making both uh vermilion dawn and conundrum type music the conundrum stuff was fueled by um the contortionist like that was about that time that exoplanet language was really popular right um and you could definitely hear a bunch of spots in there where that's heavily influenced by that music um periphery influenced a lot of that music too with just like the melodies and stuff with all the guitars right um with my recent music with vermilion dawn some of my biggest influences with that would obviously be you know fallujah um the faceless a mm-hmm. uh, little bit of like children of Bodom, some okay. here and there i used to be really huge into them and they've always affected my music um and rivers of nile um I'd say I'd say those are probably the biggest bands that you'll probably hear influences from. I'm not like trying to like rip them off or anything, but just when you listen to certain tracks and albums off those particular bands, you just feel like you're transported to you know a different plane of existence for you know the length of the the album, mm-hmm. and that's kind of what I was you know chasing after is being able to release something that has that same effect for my listeners. Um, because I always that was just something that always fascinated me with some of their releases, right? Yeah, I mean, a lot of them have that sort of sci-fi theme as well, which helps to add to the alien sort of feel of everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I have to ask you then, as a Faceless fan, which is your favorite album? Planetary Duality. Um, okay, and that That's is a solid, solid answer. Yeah, my second, right behind it, would be Autotheism. And uh-huh. I know some people really didn't like autotheism, uh, but I I loved it. It was um, a good album. I had some really because I saw them on that tour when they were mm-hmm. promoting autotheism, and those songs really carry across well live. Yeah, yeah. I think my only complaint with that album was, you know, they had Evan Brewer playing on bass, mm-hmm. and I could just never hear it in the mix. Right. Um, and then the bass drum was too thumpy. And it was just right. very overpowering, especially if you listen to it like a, like car speakers or something. Uh, you'd have to sit there and futz with your, you know, your EQ and everything on your stereo to get it to to not just <clears throat> overload your speakers. Right. Um, but yeah, Michael Keane's guitar work uh, that was always something that just I, I love his guitar playing. Absolutely phenomenal. Very excellent musician. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did you think of in becoming a ghost? Because I know that's uh, a very touchy subject for some fans of the band. Yeah. I, I Overall, I liked it. It definitely was not like the, the Faceless album I wanted. When the Spiraling right. Void first came out, that first single they released, we were all like, all my friends and everybody were like, wow, you know, this is awesome. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, I really actually liked the vocalist from Abigail Williams on the whole record. I was a little iffy when I first heard the announcement, but he sound he sounded great. I loved his vocals. He did. It was awesome. He, he was the best part of that album, hands down, in my opinion. Absolutely. Um, but the overproduction and just the overall, like, um, I don't know what they, just the way that the album was produced, like it hurts to listen to it sometimes. Some songs, sound really good like instrumental illness that's that little instrumental song yeah absolutely slaps um Mm -hmm. in some spots but the rest of the song it just i think it's like the snare drum the snare drum and the kick there's something going on with like the drum kit itself that they used for their programming that just does not mix well with the rest of the album Um, right but it just kind of felt like a weak weak faceless album it was good it was good but um definitely not my favorite but uh, the one thing about that album for me is like Digging the Grave is now one of my favorite Faceless songs. I absolutely love that track. Yeah, but I like that song. one. And 
I think a couple of Mephistopheles was yeah, that one was good too. Yeah, it's just like there was so there was some really standout tracks songwriting wise on that album that I loved, and then again those vocals were awesome. It's just it could have been something really cool. Uh, yeah, just kind of fell flat. I think. Mm-hmm. I agree, hundred percent. It's a shame. <laughs> And then, okay, well, what about uh, getting into heavy music? So w- growing up, how did you kind of transition into listening to metal and hardcore and all that stuff? Uh, so, yeah, that was a while ago. Um, so when I was growing up, um, I lived with my mother. My mom and dad were never married. Um, and I had, you know, sole custody with my mother. Saw my dad's in the, every, like every other weekend whenever he had off of work. And... My mother would always listen to like R and B, um, mm-hmm. hip hop, and then she'd throw in like a little bit of Alice Cooper and like Bad Company, and I always liked that stuff, like the rock and everything. Mm-hmm. But when it, my dad was, you know, big into like Death Clock, Man of War, yeah. um, stuff like that, you know, um, industrial metal, Ramstein, all those type of bands, and so that's where I kind of would go to his house, and he actually had like. Back back when he had this computer, he had LimeWire on it, and <laughs> he got me a little MP3 player, and I would go to his house. I'd search YouTube and find go just go down rabbit holes and mm-hmm. list off a bunch of songs I liked, and I'd give him the list, and he'd go download them on LimeWire, <laughs> um, wreck his computer. He didn't know it at the time, <laughs> right? Um, but then when I come the next time, he download all the songs I asked for on my MP3 player. And that's how I got into like Dragon Force. And then I got into like a like a really big like melodic death metal, like Finland type of stuff. I can't remember any of the names of the band specifically, um, but just a lot of foreign bands I got into. And then how I really got into like this type of music or what really started it was... I was hanging out with my friends at a friend's house and I was actually the drummer of my conundrum band. His name is Garrett. And it was me, Garrett and our vocalist for that same band, Dylan or DJ. And I remember he said, Hey, you guys want to hear some like real metal shit? And we're <laughs> like, yeah, because we listened to like um, Avenge sevenfold and stuff like that. And that was like heavy stuff back then, you know? Mm-hmm. And he got on the, we all sat down, laying down our bellies on his, like his laptop. And he typed in every time I die by children of Bodom. And we watched the music video. And back then I've never heard anything like that before. And I loved it. It was mm-hmm. like crack. And that sent me down an absolute rabbit hole. I got all their discography, listened to everything they've ever released. And I, I loved children of Bodom and all their music. He also showed um, a Whitechapel song off Somatic Defilement. I can't remember what song it was, but I, I then I got me in a little bit of a Whitechapel kick. Um, and then we also listened to Bludgeon to Death by Suicide Silence. And just that music, I never heard it before. And hearing it for the first time, like I said, was like crack. And that just sent me on a rabbit hole. I got into all different types of music, children, of and rivers of Nile, um, Fallujah, faceless, all those type of bands. It just went off from there. And that's kind of how it, you know, over time I start to really know what I like and everything and kind of get away from some bands. Like I don't really listen to white chapel anymore. Right. Um, I really don't listen to suicide silence, anything past like that, that one album, the mm-hmm. last one with Mitch Luker on it. Um, and now, you know, I'm pretty set in my ways of what I listen to, but that's kind of where it started was, you know, my dad was probably my biggest influence to get into this type of music because anytime I brought back music that was, you know, something my mom definitely did not approve of, he, <laughs> down, he, he would download it for me. He'd say, you know what, you like <laughs> listening to this? You like listening to this? Here, I'll download it for you. <laughs> and, you know, back then I didn't, I didn't read none of the lyrics. I just took in the i didn't know any of the lyrics to the songs i was listening to i just heard screaming but it sounded great loved Mm -hmm. it and initially back then i only liked high um guttural or like not gutturals but high vocals 
I didn't yeah. like the low stuff like Phil Bozeman or something would do. Mm. But when I when I heard the right kind of lows, then I really got into it. And that's just that's what really opened it up to all different types of metal. Right. Yeah, for me, um, the the band that really like made a connect, like extreme metal connect for me was Nile. Uh, yeah, those guys up in like that same experience that you had. I heard Nile for the first time, like holy crap, what is this music? And then uh, went down a mass rabbit hole and never came back out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I it's it's definitely had a big, you know, like music is for a lot of people, definitely a big, huge impact on me, you know. You're going through times of struggle or something like that. You pop in, you know, music and you just get to forget about the rest of the world for a while. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, the dynamics that the metal genre has with, you know, everything from just pure caveman music to some really emotional stuff, you know, that really pulls on your emotions. Mm -hmm. It's just something I can't find anywhere else with any other kind of genre. I'm sure people, you know, will say, ah, well, there's plenty, but just nothing that I've heard. Right. I mean, I know what you mean. There's, uh, there's something for every every mood you're feeling, basically, if, uh, if you dig through different subgenres. Mm-hmm. What about, like, um, the older, like, classic tech death stuff, like a yin to, like, uh, Necrophagus, uh, de- early, early Decapitated, uh, Spawn of Possession, any of that stuff? I listened to uh, Necrophagus. I, I think that's how they say it. it's supposed to be pronounced. Or Probably. how are you? However, you just said it. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's Necrophagus or Necrophagist. I liked that album. I used to listen to it here and there. That was pretty, you know, wow for me. Mm-hmm. Um, the very first Faceless album. Listen to a little bit of that. Um, but like stuff like Spawn of Position mm-hmm. and some of those OG bands, I never, never got the opportunity to listen to them. And okay. it's something that, as of lately, recently, I'm start, I'm trying to go back and, you know, listen to some of these bands that I saw the artwork for, listened to like five minutes and was like, eh, I don't like the vocalist or didn't uh-huh. appreciate the music at the time and just went back out. I, I did go back actually last week and listen to Spawn of Possession to see if I liked them. And I just, uh, they sounded okay, but I just, I couldn't get into it. It was something right. with like the vocalist, I think. Well, actually... Uh, depends. Like you should maybe check out uh, one of their later ones. Uh, there's an album. Oh, let me find the name. Give me one listen to it. Uh, In Cursor from 2012. That's the one I listened to. Oh, there is one. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's the that was like the big popular one that a lot of people, um, you know, like in Facebook groups would always mention. Yeah, I just uh, I couldn't get into it. Sound sounds good, you know, but just something about the music style or whatever. Doesn't no, really that, that makes complete sense. I mean, everyone yeah. has that 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 taste that they can't really explain why, but things just don't connect for them. I, I'm the same with like uh so for me, like bands like Obscura, mm-hmm. I really appreciate them musically. Like I, I know they're a great band, great musicians, great songwriters. I like them, but I can't it's not a band I ever put on, if that makes sense. Like when someone plays them, I'm like, yeah, this is pretty sweet, but I just something about it, I can't get into it. And people will probably say, like, why don't you like Obscura? Obscura is awesome, but I just I just yeah. can't. Yeah, I uh, I like, could feel the same about that. Yeah, what was that, Brendan? I was gonna say it's like Ghost with me. Like I have a lot of friends that are like, "Oh yeah, Ghost, love Ghost." Blah, blah, blah. I, I can't like, do Ghost. I don't know. I'll no? listen to it if it's on, but like I don't know. It's like it's it's yeah. It's like okay, Ghost. The thing is, it sounds nice. It's like enjoyable music, but it just all starts to sound the same. And that's, that's my issue with it. It's like, if you listen to like a ghost album, it just sounds, every album kind of sounds like a continuation of one song to me, but that's, that's just right. me. I, I, I can't, it doesn't stimulate me is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But I, I also have a lot of friends that love ghost and I always get, why don't you like ghost from a lot of them too? So yeah, me too. I think a lot of people are just mad that they got the name ghost and just, you know, did what they did with it. with like <laughs> the, the pop rock kind of stuff. Yeah, and the, and the imagery as well. Some people are mad about the imagery as well. Like you can't have like corpse paint type stuff and like do the whole evil looking thing and then make that music. Rock opera. Yeah, yeah. Scooby Doo. Can... Oh, people call it Scooby Doo rock. Scooby Doo rock. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> I could totally see why they do why they did that image though, because I think for them, you know, that contrast of you know we have this name, we got this image that we're putting out, but here's our music. You know, it's. 
to me, it's an excellent marketing strategy. Yeah, I agree. I, I respect them a lot for what they've achieved. Yeah, um, absolutely. They really, there was a niche there that no one saw that they completely took over. Um, and honestly, like I, anyone that makes music that's at least alternative or experimental in some way and makes it big, I have a lot of respect for them and I'm happy for them. Um, mm -hmm. Cause it, I, I'd still take ghosts any day over like some, a lot of the stuff that's out there. People are listening to, to be honest. So yeah, you know, each to their own. It's just, it's not my thing, but I'm glad that they they've done well and people like them. Yeah, I agree. Um, Brendan, I have been talking too much. I know you have a bunch of questions you like to ask. I will let you take the oh. lead for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no, you're good, dude. Um, well, I always like to know about like where people are from, and um, you know Wisconsin death metal here. Um, mm -hmm. Are you a Milwaukee best guy or a Miller High Life guy? I I actually don't uh, I don't drink. I don't really watch sports. I'm actually I'm a, I'm kind of like a a little bit outside of Green Bay. But I always just say, you know, Green Bay, because that's where everybody, you know, says that they're from. Right. When they say, is. yeah. Like if I say like a small town, you know, nobody's going to know it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't I don't I have an answer for that specific question. I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then um, what about cheese? Your favorite? Um. <laughs> cheese. <laughs> yeah. Well, OK. I love I love food. That's. Music and food, that's some of my biggest weaknesses. Cheese, I love cheese curds. It fascinates me that some people um, have never tasted cheese curds. I don't know how. Right? Yeah, it's like, what the hell, you know? Um, but we cheese, it's all over the place, you know, in Wisconsin. You go to Walmart and you have like 30 different options just in the deli alone for fresh cut cheese. And then you go to like the processed aisles where they got name brands and there's just a whole wall of cheese that you could just pick from. And it's, it's awesome. <laughs> so you are like, a, you like cheddar, like the Wisconsin cheddar. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of like super sharp cheddar. I know a lot yeah. of people don't like super sharp cheddar, but I, I don't think there's anything better than super sharp cheddar, like on a burger or something like that. Yeah. Really good. Melted on some hash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice. And then um what's your uh wait if we were going to like come into town uh where are you bringing us to eat? Oh, well there's all kinds of choices like any kind of like local bar honestly. Um I'm trying to think I I probably have to say like if you were to come into town it would be a brew house. One of the brew houses up here. I don't, like I said, I don't drink beer or anything or any kind of alcohol, but I'll definitely go to a brew house and eat their food because usually it's really good. Um, one particular spot, it's actually not in Green Bay. It's in Milwaukee. Um, it's called Milwaukee, I think, Brew House or Milwaukee Ale House. I think it's Ale House. Yeah. Really good place. Got a lot of good food in it. Um, and it's all like that cheese curds, burgers fries all that kind of you know type of food nice. that's definitely where i'd go yeah we'd um i used to work in a restaurant and we did uh cheese curds we do fried cheese curds or we would put them in a poutine yep yeah i've had poutine and um they were always from wisconsin yeah no, i it's super food i tell you it's right up there with like broccoli colored flour yeah buddy <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's so good for sure. Um, nice, nice. Um, oh, Brendan, make sure you ask about our new favorite uh, Midwestern chain that we've never had as well. Oh, what's that? Um, Culver's. Yeah. Oh, you guys <laughs> have that. You guys just found Culver's or had Culver's, huh? We we, no, we never had it. Not it's yet. not it's not by us. But oh, you've never we, had we've, it. We we no. learned about it. We were, okay. We learned, Everybody we learned about, about it. Culver's, it, it, the hype. For me, is real. It's it's really good. Um, really, yeah. I mean, you go like if you compare it to something like Dairy Queen. I mean, Dairy Queen's got you know some decent ice cream options, but you know, in terms of like food 
and everything and burgers and stuff, Culver's has got to beat. You know, every yeah. time I've been there, the burgers are, you know, they come out and they actually kind of look like what's on, you know, the menu, the menu picture. But All right. The cheese curds are really good. Their ice cream, I think, I think it's just frozen custard actually is really good. You know, they do like concrete mixers where it's kind of like you make your, you can, I think you can make your own where you get like a certain type of custard and you can throw all kinds of toppings in it, like Andy's mince pieces, beef, uh, Snickers, M&Ms, you know, anything you want to throw in there, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cheese curds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, people do that up here. They dip their French fries in ice cream, cheese curds in ice cream. People like that Jesus. stuff. <laughs> yeah. I've done uh, it before, and I can see where people like it, but it's just, I'd rather be dipping it in, like, you know, ranch or something or yeah. like that. I mean, but yeah, Culver's, Culver's is good. If you ever get an opportunity to visit one, um, it's, it's worth it, I'd say. Uh, they always make their food fresh. You know, from what they say, they don't freeze. I don't think they freeze stuff, but everything's made yeah. fresh. Yeah. Now I really want to try it. Is, is a mascot called Scoopy? Is it like an ice cream mascot? I Okay. I've seen this mascot, I think. I, I don't remember the exact name, but I want to say it's Scoopy or something like that. Okay. Stupid like well, that. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, oh, so as a solo musician um, and, you know, trying to find some talent, if you could find talent alive or dead, who would you have uh, helping you out, make it happen? Oh, you're talking like, okay. Um, like the dream team, you know, the dream, Your dream. The dream team. That's a good, that's a good question. Um, for drums. I'm actually going to go with a, and it's actually the person that I inspired a lot of like the, the style of music, like all my, all of the drums on this album, you know, were programmed. Um, but it, you know, they use samples and everything. And I went and did the program for it. Um, but the drummer I would say is probably a drummer called Robin stone. And I believe he's from Australia or New Zealand. F- phenomenal drummer. He does like session work. Um, he's like on Facebook and stuff, but the guy is a ridiculously good drummer and I don't think a lot of people, you know, know of him too much, but he do, he's done some work on like some black metal bands and some other bands. I can't name specific ones, but phenomenal drummer. And whenever I was writing my music um, and I was writing drum parts, because people can really lose themselves in um, impossible to play drum stuff. I would mm-hmm. always kind of look if, if I ever questioned myself and said, is this too fast or is this too complicated? I'd look up him and I'd watch a video of him playing. And it's like, okay, if I stay just under what he's doing, then I think I'm safe. You know, no one's going to say that this just sounds unrealistic. Um, so I'd say Robin stone for drums um, for bassists. Uh I'm not sure. I'll I'll throw out like Evan Brewer. I like Evan Brewer's work Um, and like Entheos and the Faceless and some of his other projects. Really good bass. bass Oh, yeah. Um, For another guitarist, I'd be really split between um, Scott Carstairs of Fallujah um, or Michael Keane, obviously. I mean, sober Michael Keane. I, well, I don't know. Yeah, sober, sober and clean Michael Keane. I wouldn't want to work with, you know, a Michael Keane that has his, uh, any issues or anything. It sounds like hell. But uh, I'd say those two guitarists would probably be ones that I would pick. And I'm sure if I thought about it more, I'd probably think of other people. But off the top of my head, those are probably yeah. some of those influential. I have a question while you're thinking. Um, yeah, yeah. Or- so, as far as music from your state goes, is there anyone in Wisconsin we should be checking out that you're aware of? Erroneous. Okay. Um, Erroneous is one band. Um, they do, they've been around here for a while. Like they played around the local scene. And then within the last like couple of years, they did uh, a label signing to the Artisan Era down in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. That's where that label's located. Uh-huh. And their members are kind of spread out right now. They have, I think, two or three of them that live in Green Bay uh, or like Wisconsin area. They have their drummer is from France, I want to say. And the guy that mastered my music, Nick, lives down in Florida. But uh, okay. definitely a really, 
great band to listen to. They have a lot of the music is pretty technical. Um, and you know, for some people that really don't like a lot of the technical stuff, they might not like it, but um, they're excellent musicians. And some of the stuff they do is really good. They, they don't just do like straight blast beats or straight double kick, you know, like some of the songs I have, the groove that they have or that they typically tend to use is mm -hmm. I'd say really unique to the genre. And, you know, if you listen to like one of their songs, you'd say, yeah, it sounds like erroneous. And they just okay. released a, an album within the last, I think week or two here. I think it's called Arcala. And I listened to it. It's got some really good tracks on it. Really good guitar work. Vocals sound really good. Um, just a solid band. And yeah, they're from originally from like green Bay area. That's where they've always been from. Awesome. Um, nice. apart from right now. Them, yeah. Apart oh, from yeah. Them, cool album cover. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was, um, there was one band from Wisconsin that stood out to me this year that I absolutely love. I don't know if you know the one, uh, cabin light. Cabin yeah. light. Mm -hmm. I have not heard of them. Are they, uh, um, they're awesome. Um, what genre are they? They're like they're kind of hard. They're really hard pan to pin down. Um, they're like a mix of sludge, post metal, noise, drone, doom, a whole, okay. whole lot of stuff. So it's like, yeah, it's like some rock in there. Like, yeah, you know I mean? it's if you like sort of innovative experimental stuff, you should check it out. It's a it's a cool album. It's like very atmospheric, but also got a, a massive vibe to it as well. Yeah, nice. I'll have to check them. I'll have to check them out. Write them down. Um, in terms of like oh, other. Yeah. Other bands like, or, or what were you gonna say, Brendan? Oh, um, nothing. No, you're good. I was. I oh, okay. no, finish your thought. You're good. Um, aside from like erroneous, there's like a lot of local bands that you know don't really play around too much, uh -huh. um, outside of like the area. But I know that the other notable one would be Pangea or Pangea. Okay. Um, they're signed to actually Metal Blade Records. That was something recent they did, but they were like erroneous. I think they actually played a couple shows together, but they would play around here. Um, and they were kind of like them. Erroneous were like the big local bands that were around here that actually transferred into making it, you know, a, pro a profession. Nice. Um, but Pangea, they kind of similar to Erroneous. They have members from all over the place. I think they're drummers from New York. And lately they haven't been really active despite getting the label signing. Um, but I think that's just due to them all being kind of split up. Can't really practice or write that well uh, when you're all far away. Right. I'd say those are probably two of the most notable bands that I can think of from Wisconsin. Um, huh. Other than that, yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of local bands. I was just doing a search on uh, Wisconsin on Bandcamp and just found this band, Burial Hex. Burial yes. Hex? I actually heard that one. Um, we actually did a Midwestern theme week on our website uh, a few months back and covered some bands from Wisconsin and a bunch of the other ones from surrounding states. Uh, I think they came up as one of the ones I found. Yeah, yeah. This looks pretty good. Um, I just I just saved the... Uh, the album is called... True Double? Oh, they have a lot of music. Holy shit. <laughs> they do. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at their band camp and yeah, I, I have too. <laughs> 41 releases. My goodness. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. This I'll looks pretty neat. Too. So I'm gonna, yeah, I know. That's a little rabbit hole we just found. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to eat some fucking cheese curds and listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oh man. Um, so what's uh one of your like your favorite bands or genres to uh like kind of calm down and wind down and relax to? Um I listen to I mean, you know, I'm it's gonna sound weird, but I actually listen to my own music. Like I know a lot of people will sit there and say, Well, that's kind of you know weird, but you know, I make it for people to listen to, but at the same time I also make it for me. Um, because it fills a void that I think is missing. You know, when I listen to music, it's filled with like the stuff I want to listen to, the type of feelings I want to listen to. I've listened to my music a lot. I'll go back and listen to like my old demos and stuff. Um, but in terms of like other bands besides myself, um, would be like, uh, you know, Fallujah. I like, 
you know, Dreamless, Thush Prevails. Those are some of the songs I like. Um, Rivers of Nile, every time going back and listening to like um, Monarchy, that album is really great to listen to. But I mean, I also listen to, you know, other completely different genres, you know, like um, ambient, ambient kind of music. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, fuck, I'll even listen to like the Skyrim soundtrack. You know? <laughs> That's a good soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 like that whole fucking. Yeah. And just yeah. like the exploration music, you know, in that yeah. game, just, you know, if I listen to that, it's like, yeah, I can picture myself just in the serene mountains with snow and everything and everything's all right. Um, you yeah. can uh, you can get that soundtrack on vinyl, which tells you that people, oh. a lot of people listen to it. <laughs> Yeah, it's so really uh, Gilead Gilead Media, probably saying it wrong, is uh, in Wisconsin. They released um, "Wits End" by Mismer. Yes, um, they, they did. Yeah, um, yeah, right. yeah. <clears throat> so that's that's another amazing rabbit hole if you don't know. Oh, it's- by the way, Brendan, I know it's unrelated to this, but while I have you for two seconds, ch- if you ever get the chance to see Mismer, do it. Yeah, oh, I, I, I saw them on uh, oh. I saw them on, on Wednesday with I Had God, and they were phenomenal. I bet, man. I can only imagine for now. Hopefully, but um, I was gonna say there's this uh, hetero sect um, off of Gilead Media. There, um, listen to that. Listen to that. Uh, Rapturous flesh consumed. Ah, oh, so good, dude. Yeah, I've never, I've never, this is a label. I've never heard of these or heard yeah, of them before. Yeah, man, there's a lot of really good stuff off of this. I, oh, Fjorn, listen to Fjorn, um, uh, Rites of Despair. Oh, you want to listen to some ambient, brutal shit there. It's it's slow and low there, that one. Yeah, um, sick. They're from Oshkosh. Yeah, there's a lot there of good go. stuff. Now you have a local yeah. label you can, you know about. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm telling you, dude, yeah, the Fjorn, I'm just, I can just say, oh, man, I'm going to, like, dig through these all again. There's some really good albums on here. Yeah, nice. Imperial Triumph, uh, Triumph, it's on there. That's they, always- just, they just dropped a new album, I'm pretty sure, as well. Yeah, and, oh, um, Portrayal of Guilt, Let Pain Be Your Guide, an amazing little album. Got to check that out. That's a great band too. Yeah, I'll definitely look into some of these. They look like that. I mean, judging off the artwork, you know, a lot of these bands look like they kind of be up my alley for sure. Oh yeah, man. I, I definitely think you would enjoy just about all of these bands for one reason or another. Yeah, I mean whether it's fast paced or slow paced or just ambient, fucking brutal as hell. All of them are brutal. <laughs> They're great. Sick. Yeah, I'll definitely check them out. For sure. Yeah. Um, so we're actually coming up to the hour mark. So before we uh, wrap up, I had one more hypothetical question for, to ask you. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you haven't played live yet, but seeing as you're planning to in the future, if you could play anywhere, do you have a, like a, a location or a city or even a state that you would like to play most? Ooh. Um, that, that is a good question. Um, let me think. I mean, everyone's dream is to like go overseas and play. There's a lot right. of big festivals out there, mm-hmm. right. but in terms of like the state or like the states here, I'd think that um somewhere in like Tennessee, maybe you know, because that's mm-hmm. where like Inferi is from, and some of those bands. And you'd think that around that area, they'd have people that really like that music. Mm-hmm. Um, but if there's also like, you know, places like in Milwaukee that have really nice venues. Um, some places that are like in the Twin Cities uh, that got nice venues too. Uh, but in terms of like a dream place to play, I just say anywhere that has like good sound where I can hear myself. That's that's probably the biggest <laughs> the biggest draw to like any kind of venue. Mm-hmm. Um, so no, not not in particular like a a specific state or anything you know just as long as there's people that want to listen to the music that's right. the biggest okay. thing for me well, what about country wise i mean you said the overseas thing is it like a country you, you like uh if you had the opportunity you'd play in if uh 
I don't, I'm not sure what country they're in. Any country over there would do fine with me. Um, but something like tech fest or, um, like, like a early in the day Vakken festival yeah. or something that would be cooler. Like Hellfest or something, um, something along those lines, you know, obviously not like a headlining act, but you know, <laughs> if you were even able to play in that show, um, would be sick, you know? Yeah. Same with like tech fest tech fest has got a lot of cool shows. They do, um, playing that would be awesome. Yeah, there's uh, some other one I saw this year that started as well. That was uh, it was all technical, like metal and then prog stuff. I can't remember what it was called. They had some really big name acts as well. Uh, like Periphery was on the list, I'm pretty sure, and a bunch of other stuff. But yeah, there's, uh, there's a few cool uh, festivals for, that you would fit into uh, your music. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the biggest thing for me is um, being able to, you know, because I, I can play all the music, you know, mm-hmm. Um but like I'll never play vocals live or anything like that. I'll always be like on guitar. So it's like having people that care as much about me, you know, performing the music and wanting it to sound, you know, how it kind of sounds on the record. You know, that, yeah. that, that's the biggest challenge. Right. Um, they got to believe in the brand. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, that brings us to the hour mark, basically. So I just wanted to, uh, before we wrap up, is there anything that you want to kind of put out there that people should be aware of or looking for? Or like, uh, I know you mentioned CDs are coming. You have the new album dropping next month. Do you want to just quickly recap all that stuff? Yeah. So um, in, in terms of my other band, Conundrum, September 10th, that Redux album or Redo album, however you want to say it, um is coming out and like i said that's got new vocals slightly better master and that will be just a digital release where you can buy it on like Bandcamp. um you'll be able to buy it like you know if you're on spotify itunes all the the general major outlets you can buy it on there um that'll be released september 10th as far as vermilion dawn stuff goes a lot of people were asking me for physical cds and with a lot of the contributions from people buying it like on Bandcamp. Um, I was able to take a lot of that money and put it towards getting a small stock of the CDs made. Oh, um, yeah. awesome. The biggest thing for me was I didn't want to do just like a sleeve, you know, really cheap one. I would have been able to do a long time ago if that was the case. I really wanted the real deal jewel CD um, that has like the pamphlet on the inside, you know, the artwork on the actual CD. Um that's always something I've been wanting. So it's like, if I'm going to sell CDs, I want to be able to offer something like that for people. So those were put into works and then they should be here within two to three weeks, hopefully. And then I will be doing like all the prep work to get like stuff for shipping. Um, I've already been writing some names for people that have asked for them and I have it to tell them, no, they're not yet. So I <laughs> kind of have like a pre-order list that I'm kind of keeping track of. Awesome. Um, so those will be here. Hopefully the beginning of next month. And then I'll be making announcements on my band camp and Facebook um, when I'm ready to start selling them. And then, you know, we'll get links and everything like that in terms of uh, music for me, that's would be coming up. I am working on music Uh, with my job. It's kind of hard to get down there and actually, you know, work on stuff. And I'm work like long hours, a lot of the days in the week. Um, so it's kind of hard to get down there and commit time to it, but I do have material that was written um, for an, a release that I was going to put up before Witch Den, um, but I just decided to scrap that stuff, wrote Witch Den, and this stuff that I had prior, I'm just retracking a lot of the guitars and reworking stuff, and that's something I am working on. I'm not sure if it'll be this year, but I do want to try putting out at least maybe like a single or something by the end of the year. Um, we'll just have to see how it goes, and all that stuff will obviously be you know, communicated, posted on Facebook, wherever you guys can follow me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was great, uh, great chatting to you and uh, getting to meet you properly. So we appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It was nice meeting you guys. And, you know, thanks for having me on. I really enjoy talking about that kind of stuff. Of course. Yeah. Uh, in the future, if you have some more content come out, hit us up and we'll have you back on again. Awesome. Yeah, I will definitely will do that. It was nice talking to you guys. Yeah, you too. Cheers. Everyone, thanks for listening. And uh, to you next time, I'm going to have some more guests for you. Bye.